Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Um, so in this video, I'm going to show you and talk about how my Ludwig 6.5 by 14 Black Beauty snare drum is tuned for a big rock drum sound. I'm going to share some a couple little, a couple seconds of some clips of songs that I've recorded on my channel already. Uh, just to give you an example of what it sounds like, I think it's a pretty good representation of what uh, the drum is capable of and how, how it sounds in a rock setting. Um, and then we'll uh, go into the specifics of how it's actually tuned um, after that. A disclaimer before I do this video, we drummers are a finicky bunch and you know that um, drum sounds are very, very subjective and you know, not everybody likes the same thing. So especially with the snare drum, that's the focal point of your drum kit. That's, that's the main voice. So you want it to sound good. You can ask 10 drummers what their favorite snare drum sound is and you'll probably get 10 different answers. So this is just a, um, a video of a general tuning for a big rock drum sound. But you can be confident in knowing that this information I'm gonna share with you is based on nearly 50 years of experience from my, my own personal career as well as you know countless tips and times that I've talked with pro drummers and you know and reaffirmed what I've already known about getting um, drum sounds and especially with the snare drum and how to make it sound good in a rock setting so um, I'm going to show you these clips first and then we'll get into the specifics of it of the tuning of it after that So the first clip that you heard was Talk To You Later, and the snare drum in that song I thought sounded good. I got a, a pretty good so, uh, sound on it. And that's that particular sound is most representative of what the drum actually sounds like acoustically in a good sounding room. There's not a lot of processing on it, where the other two songs have quite a bit of processing on them, as far as reverb goes. But each of those songs, it was the same drum, same heads, same exact tuning, same exact EQ. The only thing that was different was the type and amount of reverb that I used on it. Um, but to get to the specifics of the tuning of this drum, which is what we all came here for, right? So um, as with, with any of my drums, the first thing that I do, um, what I learned years and years and years ago was when I get a new head, I put it on the drum and I tune it up as almost as tight as it'll go. And I, <clears throat> I do that with top and bottom head, except for the snare drum. The bottom head on the snare drum is a little different animal. It's more susceptible to damage, so I don't do it quite the same way. But with the top heads on my toms and my snare drum, I put the new head on and I tune it up as high as I can and I just let it sit overnight. And what that does is it allows the head to stretch and seat on the bearing edge, so it makes it a lot easier to tune and it stays in tune after that. So with the bottom head of the snare drum, I also tune it up very tight as well and let it sit. But I don't tune it up quite as tight. I, I'm a little bit more careful with it. But once it's, it's up there, I still, I leave it sit overnight. So then when I'm ready to tune the drum, I start with the bottom head. And I'll notice that as it sat overnight, it kind of detuned a little bit and I could actually tune it up a little bit higher again. So it's kind of a general, a general rule and, and pretty much common knowledge that if you want your snares to be real responsive and you want that drum, that snare drum to pop and have a nice crack to it, then you want your bottom head to be pretty tight. And by pretty tight, um, I'm gonna show you some specifics as far as like what the notes are and everything like that and some frequency settings and all that kind of stuff. But uh, for you TuneBot nerds and things like that. But having the, the uh, bottom head really, really tight helps that the snares to really respond well and, and get that nice pop and nice tonality that you want out of your snare drum. So I find that with my snare drum and 
I have several different snare drums. I have a Ludwig Superphonic 402. I have this Black Beauty and other ones that I've had over the years. Of all the snare drums that I have, it just seems to, for me, me personally, it just seems that the bottom head always ends up in, the, in about the same range, which is approximately a G or a G sharp, right around in that area, when you tap on it and match the pitch of the head to a note, which I'm gonna do right now. So this, this snare drum is fresh out of a recording that just that sounded great, and I haven't changed it at all, and this is where the bottom head is. If you can hear that, The lugs are about the same pitch. And if you match it to a note, I have a pitch pipe here. It's just just a little flat of a G sharp. But that bottom head is very tight. As far as frequency goes, it's right around 395, 398, 400, right around in that area, 400 hertz. So it's very, very tight. Um, but a G, a G sharp just seems to be the magic tone and the magic area of where this drum in my 402 just come alive. It's not too tight uh, where it sounds boxy and brittle and it's not too loose where it sounds tubby and I don't get any snare response. It's just perfect. So that's where this one is at. Periodically then, you know, after I play it for a while, I'll go back and check it to make sure it stays there. But once it's stretched out like that, it stays put pretty much and it sounds great. Something that I wanted to mention about this snare drum that I have, it's tricked out a little bit. I made some improvements on it to make it sound a little bit better. If you notice, these snare wires are Canopus or Canopus, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Uh, 20 strand vintage snares, they sound great on this drum. They sound like bacon sizzling in a frying pan. Really nice. I didn't like them so much on my Superphonic 402. It just kind of made the, the snare drum sound less desirable, it wasn't, wasn't quite as fat and as, and as wet sounding as what I like. But on this Black Beauty, they sound perfect, really, really nice, very durable, very high quality. I highly recommend them, they, they sound great. It also has DW True Hoops on it instead of the stock hoops. These are a little bit thicker than the stock um, triple flange hoops. It makes it easier to tune, kind of smooths out the overtones and I get a really nice, loud, thick cross stick sound on them. Uh, as well, so that was an improvement. And then I also put on the the Ludwig strainer, the latest version, uh, over the P85 that came with it. It's, this is, is I like this one. It's nice and smooth, and I don't have any trouble with it at all. Now, as far as the top head goes, um, with this drum, I mean, you can use any head you want to use, whatever head of your choice. With this drum, I usually use, for live playing, I use an Emperor X because it's it cuts down on the overtone, so I don't muffle it. I don't really like muffling on anything except the bass drum. I try to leave my stuff wide open. If you can tune well and tune out the overtones, you really don't need much muffling, if any at all, and I don't use any on anything. Um, but with the snare drum, with live playing, I use an Emperor X on the, on the batter side. Um, in the studio, I lose some articulation with the Emperor X, so I usually go a little bit thinner, and I'll be probably more times than not use a vintage Emperor, which, which is what this one is. Um, it just it sounds great. It gives me that pop, that nice thick mid-range um, meat of the drum and allows me a little bit more articulation than the Emperor X does. So I really like it on this drum. But as far as the tuning goes, the top head that I find for, for me personally, I like it a medium tight. So what that means is that on a scale of one to 10, I'd say it would be like if zero was zero tension at all and 10 was tabletop tension, I'd say it was right around a seven. I just make sure that all the lugs are the same pitch, just like I do on my toms and everything. I'm not as quite quite as fanatical with the snare drum as far as as making sure that on the top and bottom head that all the lugs are exactly the same pitch and singing. I don't really want my snare drum to sing like the, my toms. I want my toms to sing and have a nice big open full tone that resonates with the snare. It's a little bit different story. So I'm not as anal about the, the, uh, the notes and the tuning and everything, but I do try to get all the lugs to the same pitch and for the tuning TuneBot guys and, and guys that want to know what the frequencies are, it's right around um, 
about 300, 295, 300, 305, right around in there on the top head. That's what the frequency um, of, of the tension is on the top head. And it just gives a nice feel. It's a nice poppy crack. Um, the the stick just bounces off of the off of the head, and it just sounds really nice and full. So that's the exact tuning that I had on all three of the snippets that you've heard. Um, it hasn't changed whatsoever. And in general, for a general rock tuning, um, that's probably the best you're going to get. I mean, yes, you can. You know, if you want something that cuts more, you can, you know, muffle it up and maybe tune it up a little bit higher and go for the a piercing crack. If you want a 70s ballad type song, uh, snare sounds for that song, you know, you can tune it way down and muffle it up and get that, that gushy feel if you want. And that's fine. There are no rules. Whatever works, works. But as a general rule, um, if you want a big open sound, that's pretty much how you want it to be tuned. And that can translate into snare drums of other genres as well. I think the, the biggest rule of thumb is you want your snare head, the bottom snare head to be very tight to get the nice crisp response from your snares. And you want the top head to be responsive, not too tight where it's tabletop tight, but tight enough where you get a nice response, a nice stick response and the drum projects and sounds good. So that's how this drum was tuned. I think it sounds good. I think the principles apply across the board. If you want a, you know, a general good sounding snare drum, if you do that, you're going to be in the ballpark. And it's just a matter of tweaking to your liking. If you want to muffle, if you want to tune it up a little higher or lower, whatever you want to do. But in general, I think this tuning will serve you well. So I hope it was beneficial. I hope you learned something from it. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments and I'll see you on the next video.